Hello, good morning, and it's soundtrack time. And welcome to episode two of the MOMW show. And I currently have uh, Sector and Gonzo with me. Please say hello. Morning, everybody. It's time to get caffeinated hello. and do some modding. <laughs> get caffeinated, please. <laughs> I've already had an entire pot. Uh. All right. Yeah. yeah look, dude, I'm I'm slow to get started. You got to give me a break here. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. So I myself, uh, welcome. And yeah. So I guess soundcheck. Haven't gotten a word from anybody actually on the Twitch, but we're just gonna go forward. Um, excuse me. So my intention today is to kind of just uh, finish where we left off with the uh, dev build option toggle thing. Um, and then uh, you know, Gonzo sector, please stop me at any point. Um, with feedback or conversation and uh you know and just do like we said and and the intention is <clears throat> excuse me after that maybe we'll poke into uh some lua mod hacking or something um so yeah without further ado speaking of which not to sidetrack too much but before we get into it did you see the um i think you may have missed something that i posted in the chat this morning there's a minor fucky wucky in the ground cover of fire instructions that we should probably clear up. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I did see that. I put eyeball reaction on it, but I didn't actually, you know, dig into it. So let's do that. What channel was it in? Uh, uh, I think I put it in general. Or no, I put it in stream ideas. I apologize. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, thank you, thank you. No, no, it's all good. All right. So let's put this up here and take a look at it. Um, the, so. the Windows and Linux instructions have like merged together with each other. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Um, whoops. Um, okay. Oops. Yeah, so that must be like a format error or something. Um, well, let's take a look at the source, and we can kind of see what it's supposed to be. Um, and yeah, before well, there's because the the Windows version does not have um, .exe on it, but also they're both Windows versions. Right. Yeah. Let me uh, let me get there. That was usage notes. Okay. Yeah, we definitely want to take a look at this before I get in too far into the weeds. Good call, at sector. I appreciate that. Hey, look, and I happen to be, oh no, this is Delta plugin, okay. I was trying to, we were debating removing skip cells, but we're not doing that. I was incorrect about that being the default default. And uh, yeah, so this would be- Well, if you um, run it in the terminal, we can't actually get rid of that. What do you mean, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the arg for running it in the terminal? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, if you just don't give it any kind of arguments at all for anything, it will um, it will use skip cells and it will make a merge plugin. Okay, it just so doesn't like if you double click on it from the UI, you won't see any possible errors. So we should still direct people to do it in the command line for now. Okay, right. Okay, so I was under the personally, I was under the assumption that yeah, the new update with Delta plugin, as was my user experience. And my interpretation of your merge request was that uh, the default without skip cells was with skip cells, right? That's the new default, right? Not really. In okay. if you do, if you ask it to merge, it will not implicitly do skip cells for you. If you don't provide any argument at all then it will do a merge with skip cells. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, I follow now. Okay, so that's what you were talking about where you were, it wasn't exactly ready as is. Okay, I get you. Um, all right, well, let's try to work out what exactly is wonky here. So um, the particular usage note is marked generic. So just looking at it here on this URL should suffice. Um, and when we expand this, so yeah, yeah. So the unfortunate 
thing here is that it is hard coded to Windows. It need not be, um, and that's why I previously had the relative path, but the relative path was spicy um, for various reasons, you know. Um, so I mean, what do you think the approach is to go back to that here and have a? Well, I mean. I mean, first of all, I'm mostly just confused because it's phrased as if there are supposed to be two different instructions here, but there's actually not. All right. So let's go ahead and ask our friend, get lame. Because I don't, I don't recollect why that was changed at all. But thankfully, yeah, we have this neat thing here that is in a fun, you know, way. It's it's called blame if you're not familiar with Git. Um, so we're looking for the usage note file again here. Okay, and this is a huge file, so we might make GitLab chug a little bit, and or my laptop. We're gonna click the blame button right here. I don't know if you. It's kind of obscured by my face. This one right here. We'll just give that a click. And then that gives us this user interface where it shows each line who did what. So now we just control F. And yeah, oh, I was a little afraid of this. I'm going to make it get lab chug a little bit. Certainly, ground cover if I is in here. Let's just sanity check that. Yeah, if we're looking at it. I don't know if this is happening to you, but I recently noticed when I was trying to uh, parse some stupidly large logs in GitHub, um, you might not actually be able to control F the full content of the page because it's go. so large. Streaming. Now it will, yeah. So it's going to stream the contents for me. So I'm going to have to just scroll down a little bit till I find it. Loading full blame. Here we go. Uh, it's uh, progressively loading it. Whoa. No, look at that. This progress bar got real big. All right. Oh. Cover if I... Okay, Here we go. Ground cover if I... This be the code. In so, um, PowerShell, window... A month ago, this was changed from what? That's the inter That's the most interesting thing that might give us some insight. Is what was it before? I didn't know you could pull a timeline like that in GitLab. That's really handy. Oh yeah. You can actually do this in your editor as well. It's a very nice thing to be able to do, and it looks a lot better in in editor, in my opinion. Uh yeah, for sure. Actually, I don't um. So we would go, let's see, question mark, because I've never to get blame in uh, Magit. So let's see here. The you should be able to do get blame from, like, directly within your buffer instead of having to open the um, the status like you normally would. May I get blame? There we go. Um, okay. It's Enter. called blame. <laughs> they called it blame. It's a very Linus Torvalds thing, I think, maybe. Yeah, exactly. There's, I, That's my favorite thing about it. It's like, who do I fucking go yell at after I figure <laughs> out where this code came from? Uh, oh, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, right here in my Emacs. Ronick's name sticking out. Hey, Ronick. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, obviously we were very eager to bring Ground Cover 5 back, and we did that right away. Um, but we just got to kind of work out what the history of this line is. Because, yeah, I don't remember what would have been different here. Oh, you know what? Maybe the difference. Yeah, okay. Looking at it now with more fresh eyeballs. <clears throat> caffeine setting in. We got the Python versus Python 3. Right? And I think the implication was one or the other didn't work on Windows. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Gonzo, do you remember this? This sounds like the Python in the Windows Store thing to me. Oh, geez, it could be. This is why I recommend 
the package package manager I use for that. Oh right, for Python. Yeah, see, it's spicy oh, wait. on Windows. Um, no, no, no. I remember now. I I think uh, you can set it up in uh in the installer, but you have to do a custom install. And do what? You put it in path. Uh, to get or... the uh, uh Python three uh to be an alias in uh in the PowerShell, I think. Oh, okay. So the default then would just be Python. You have to go out of your way to get it to do Python three. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. The problem is officially, according to the Python project itself, and a lot of Linux distros follow this. Python without a number after it is Python 2, like by the standard, you know? Huh. Interesting. I was not, not aware of that. Not in Arch, but certainly in Debian. Um, I don't know about Void. Let's see. If I just type Python, what happens? Python 2, yeah, Void following the standard. Whereas Python 3, obviously, you know. So... Yeah, that's a thing, and I think that's where that comes from, because Linux distro, you'll need to be explicit. So maybe I should put the Linux path on here, and we should separate this out as like a code block, you know, to make it more distinct and, and call it out better. So I think formatting is the answer here, right? Better for formatting to convey what we're doing. Well, another thing that stood out to me about this as well is that um, I don't have a... the file extension isn't on here. I don't know if that is correct or not based on how ground cover if I works, but for Windows it should be fine. But I am not 100% on Linux, of course it's fine. Huh. Okay. I don't no. have Python installed right now on my new uh uh install. So uh this would be very easy for me to test. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change line six here um, in preparation for having like a more distinct code block here and whatever, because this is just, a, I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, and I think the wording is going to need to be. I just need the new Delta plugin, is that right? Yeah. That's all right. There were no ground cover if I side changes that I that are needed but I hmm, I might actually be running the dev build of that because I just have it get cloned hmm. I think we link people to the dev build anyway right we don't point them to a release of no. Delta oh no ground cover fight we just take them to the oof we just take them oh no no so we give them yeah we give them the main zip right here of ground cover file, so they would feasibly have whatever is up to date if it's not in a release. Yeah, we just link him right to the, um, like whatever he has available on his GitLab. Looks like main. Is, yeah, it looks like main is a little bit ahead of the last release, so you probably would need main anyways. Okay. All right. Um. So, yeah, while Gonzo is confirming that with hard data, I'm thinking about uh, how to... Because this is the actually run it step, right? So this has got to be good. And I'm curious on Windows, out of the box, what happens if you just do, right, like dot slash ground cover fi, right? On Linux, the right thing will happen because of the shebang. We don't need this, conceivably. I'll test both. Cool, awesome. All right, well, in the meantime, um, yeah, I'm gonna comment this out because that's just the cursed line in question. So now it's time to run Okay. 
trying to think about how to do an embedded code block here. What's the right way to do that? Um, let's just do it. We gotta crunch the database. Might be a good time to question some life decisions here. <laughs> All right. So yeah. The int so my intention here is to have a short line of text, and then a distinct code block like this one, not just like an inline. This is a code like a pre-formatted code block like this one. The user can just very easily. It would be nice, maybe hopefully pre-2090, but hey, it could be after two, uh, post-2090, is to have like a, I don't know, what was I looking at recently? I think it was actually the MWSE docs. Hold up, let me pull that up. Mm. But just really any probably GitHub website maybe even the modding wiki has it but yeah look at this handy little copy to clipcord button we need something like that for our code blocks really because that would make life a lot better right now we got janky text linked <laughs> that's the best i got this would be cool okay well is there maybe there's some css that we can apply that would um just give us that button every time we use this specific uh I don't even remember what tag it is that we use for code blocks, but we do have a specific one that we use for them that we could hook into. Yeah, you betcha. And the co existing code we have that is polyfilled and somewhat browser agnostic can just work, right? Um, probably with little to no edits. So shouldn't be too hard. Just uh, we got to get settiness on the case because he's like Mr. User Interface Beautification. <laughs> Dude is ridiculous, by the way. Like, dear lord. Oh, right, I know, right? So here, let me but just see. I hadn't had an opportunity to take a look at the, um, the, the UI demo that he had assembled. It was, it was oh, really nice. Yeah, I'll show some of those, actually. But, like, just this is, I think, mostly setting his brainchild here, like this user uh, interface. We're, of course, seeing dark mode. If you got light mode on your browser, you're going to experience that, and... Just some really tasteful shadowing and like a kind of almost a material design kind of thing going on here, but really nice. And then the blue here for the dev page, like just whipped it out, and I was like, "Ship it!" <laughs> yeah, dude, the blue. Oh, the blue especially has yes. such a nice look. Let me pull up some of these prototypes. Here. Reminds me just a little bit of Starwind. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and so a little context. Oh yeah, here's the <laughs> so a little context. We're talking about like improving the flow of the website based on how we lay things out, right? And uh, this is just a we're not actually going to go with this, but <laughs> tossing a little uh, Renaissance artwork into the website, you know, just to show people like, boom, no, that that's a joke though. <laughs> we're not actually going to do that, but kind of what we're aiming for here is something like this. And you can see, like, this is the mod list, total overhaul, sky and weather section and beyond. And we've got, like, some navigation context menus here, you know. Um, and so, yeah, the idea is to kind of, like, better control the flow through the website, better control the context of where you're at, you know. And, and having these side things kind of, I think, is going to go a long way. So, yeah, this is just a preview of what setting is specifically working on, and, and we're all kind of brainstorming on, and hopefully pre-2090 we can bring to the masses. Um, very hype. All right. Let's... Uh, it's beautiful. I know. It's just a thing of beauty. Okay. Hello, Todd. There we go. All right. And it, and it keeps the numbering. That's what I'm slightly worried about. Um, I wanted to do it in a way we didn't break the numbering, 
but also we had the code block like directly beneath and it wasn't like you know what are you guys doing you know to keep the flow going um and if i could spell it right it would be perfect we'll fix that but so my so my intention here is just in the code block maybe we'll have the like this is for windows or should they be in separate code blocks maybe let's try to put two of them in there because, you know, going in the spirit of, like, pure copy pasta, you know, making the user experience better. Todd Window. Yeah, good. I'm keeping that. Um, and, yeah, so while that's crunching, let's look at another kind of steadiness work of art we were discussing is like yeah yeah so having the search here some kind of like a full text search um that can like search the local static page you know that's certainly going to be needed for any kind of like uh good documentation implementation too um but yeah kind of excited i'm excited to build this out and i'm cool i'm very happy to see like i love the trusty minimal design we have but also it get you know we don't want it to get in the way of people being able to use it right we have built the happy path yeah i think that's all we got for now in terms of oh no there's a okay yeah this is a more i'm sorry this is a more up-to-date one let's see a video too even actually okay so yeah you can see here we're looking at a mod list and uh, we've got like a table of contents there uh, for each yeah and then clicking on it and it navigates you <sighs> that's beauty it's the kind of thing that we want to go for to improve the and looking at it on mobile and there it goes not in the way Oof. you know that's the kind of thing we're looking to do to improve the flow and the user experience you know and we don't miss information because the user guide is exquisitely written i think but it also does require some like prior knowledge right we just start like throwing terms at people and it's like so the hope is, at least, we'll improve that. Uh, really quick, uh, do you have a moment? Hit me. Check out the uh, ground coverify um, instructions really quick. On number six, um, is it supposed to end in delta underscore plugin dot exe? Well, so on Windows, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can omit the exe and it will like magically add it for you. But uh, I could oh, be wrong. Really? Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not kept. Yeah, I'm not Captain Windows either myself. So I could be wrong, but I think that I'm not. So yeah, that should work. Yeah, it should work, but also maybe not. Um, yeah, but that's a good, that's something, right, before we ship whatever edits we're doing today, that's something we should ascertain for sure, because um, Delta plugin on its own could be vexing enough, and then we throw this at people, and they're just going to be like, okay. oh, no. It looks like you just need to, just need Python. You don't need to specify Python 3. So what happens if you just do dot slash ground cover fi dot pi with no Python or anything? It doesn't do anything. <clears throat> okay. Wait, does he have a shebang in there? Uh, almost certainly, but let's check that. I, if Benjamin, I figure he would, but... Yeah, for sure. Tools, ground cover fi, ground cover Default Python for me on Windows is 3.12.2. There's the sh good old shebang. Thank you, Benjamin. That's using the 64-bit installer. This env might be what's borky. Like, Windows maybe has some hard-coded thing to maybe support shebangs in a limited way, but I guarantee you if they do, they don't support env right. So. 
Oh, okay. yeah, that's a good point. That's not gonna do anything. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a nice thought anyway, right? Yeah, it's a, on Unix. It's what you want to do, right? So thank you, Benjamin. <laughs> but anyways, so so okay. Here's what we're gonna do then. We're gonna have a distinct um, Linux and Windows field. That's fine. Let's just see how that looks format wise here. Hope it's not two idiots. Okay, okay. See, that's actually perfect. You know, minus obviously the garbage text. So let's just uh, make it not garbage then. Actually, so we can we can take this as a whoop. Wow, see, the, yeah, this is terrible. Wow, I'm sorry, folks. That's pretty bad. This gonna be the Windows one, where we just say Python, do the thing. Now oh, we gotta escape the quotations. something bad there. <laughs> I'll undo that escaping of the quotations for now. We'll just let Tom will be mad at me. Huh? Yeah, okay. Let's try one more time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't like the colon, maybe? Anyways, who cares? About that. Um, okay, let's type it in the Linux one first before we recrunch, since it's a bit of a time intense. And I'm going to actually just, because that'll work on any not completely broken Linux system. Regardless of, like, I know Ubuntu and, yeah, as I mentioned, Arch, they have the, like, turn Python into Python 3 thing. You know, that's a thing, and so, whatever. Alright, yeah, and it just hates the colon. Let's try to... Yeah? No, okay. You're not getting escaped. Hey, Sophie, good morning. Cool, well, good luck with the blizzard. Be safe. It's my pleasure to be here. By the way, Idaho. Sounds like a nice place to be driving through, if not for the blizzard. Okay, so the intention here... with us, Sophie. Please try to drive safe as well. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Be safe. Glad to be your guide through the snow. Your guides. I'm fortunate enough to have Gonzo and Sector here with me. Um, but yeah, the, so the intention with this is, yeah, we'll have a little comment here too. It says, this is Windows, copy and paste it, you know. Um, and then this is for the, for the rest of, for the less than 1% of you out there. What is the, uh, load order for the, uh, deleted ground cover OMW add-on? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at Just that. put it at the bottom. Let's take a look at that. So let's uh, just uh, we'll load up a simple mod that has it on there. Where's expanded? There we go. Hmm. Oh, right. We haven't. Uh, I haven't pushed up the update to re-add it. Wow. Okay. So we're gonna have to wait because I'm not 100% for sure. But uh, it's at the end. Just stick it at the end. Um, I believe we want you want it to go after the merged plugin though. Probably also light fixes. Got it, thank you. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, so this is where I have it in between merged and light fixes. Um, hopefully, like in theory, that shouldn't matter because light fixes is are only fixing lights and are not like mucking with things that would be deleted by ground cover if I... But, you know, you never know. And then, like, I'm having flashbacks to flooded caves. <laughs> Who? 
Okay. Ooh. So I can't ignore the thing that it was yelling at me about. Okay. Ex escape. Oh, right. Maybe this... It doesn't like the single escapes here. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Mm, no, wait. I goofed this last one here. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, this ended up being a bit of a deep dive here, but uh, uh, that's, I think, because it's like kind of a critical piece of text for people. I'm gonna put a I just sub. opened the game and everything seems to be working fine for me. Oh, okay. With regard to the ground cover five functionality in particular. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, I gave it a quick look with my you know, two months out of date total overhaul and it looked good. The read the problematic reads, you know, um were good. Hopefully that's not too cursed. I think it'll be okay though. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna do Linux here. I got an idea, guys. I got an idea. I think it's gonna work. Fingers crossed here on the Mac OS bit. I don't own any of those devices and I'm not really sure. But certainly we want to be accurate, so if it's not the case, we got to fix that up. All right, and then we're going to want to... So I'm going to try to... Hmm, let me know if this is being too clever. I'm getting like 60 to 80 frames and state I need. Life is great. Yeah, I tell you, it makes the ground coverifying of various statics makes a difference. And and one thing I noted is none of these things get shadows. And that has to be related. And they have a much shorter render distance, you know. But it's hard to notice, honestly, very hard to notice. I was, frankly, looking for it. Okay, so this should be like copypasta-able. Excuse me. Between Mac and Linux, but you know what would be ideal? And I don't want to scope creep too much. Maybe we can do this as like a pre-2090 later on thing. But it would be cool to like ha have this be aware of the user's path, right, that they've input. And to use it. Um, but that would be a little bit more JavaScript than I want to chew into for right now. I want to finish the, you know, opt into dev stuff. But I think like that's that could be the next JavaScript feature we do is to dynamically change this so that it reflects what the user set and it's more copy possible. Because this is good. This is going to be good, I have a feeling. But it's not going to be perfect. Okay, let's crunch the database again. My alignment isn't perfect with the HTML, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose my head over it. 
Um, okay, that'll come up in a moment. So what do we got here? Okay, so yeah, damage so far contained to just the usage notes file. Um, pretty deep cut to the wording here, but I think it's for the best so far. All right. Uh, so let's see here. While well, that's chugging, we always have to have something else to kind of peek at. Ooh, yeah, I can. <laughs> Not really something we can peek at in parallel, but I definitely want to get to this because I'm starting to get the itch to finish this one up. I want to play the game and I want to have this. Because the last time I tried to play, I was like, ooh, you know what? NPC schedules, we can do better. No offense to that mod, of course. We can always do better. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, something that is negative, right? Just because yeah. we think that we can inherently improve on something, that's just the way that it is, yeah. Well, yeah, technology changes, right? In this case, OpenMW changes and gives us more knobs. <laughs> and so I can't help but start thinking, <laughs> ooh, yeah, man, you know? I suppose that really is the way to describe it, though. Yeah, we, we get more knobs to play with. We want to turn them all at the same fucking time. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'm, like, playing the game, trying to actually enjoy myself, and then all I'm, the like, to ah. 11. Yeah, exactly, Gonzo. I'm, like, eye-twitching while I'm playing. I'm, like, oh, oh, wait a minute. It would be cool if they actually walked inside and, and maybe didn't and, and so forth, you know, um, and it didn't break quests and so forth. And I just think, like, the next thing after Go Home, right, the next Lua mod idea I have, because I do have one, um, and so far it's, like, kind of just vaporware, but I want to kind of, and it'll be, this will be interesting to talk to, to talk to Gonzo and Sector about with, is, uh, so, like, to have a dynamic interior weather sounds mod in Lua, right? So you have thunderstorm going on outside. We have some kind of, like, sound source in the cave, by the door that like is the storm and thunder and so forth you know and as you walk away from it it gets quiet and whatnot or there's a version for interiors you know um and that's already exists of course in a classic mw script mod but like has the same the usual issues there right but we could do it with lua dynamically and i think that's my next idea be a dynamic interior that sounds like fun i totally support that Hell yes. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, talking about the concept for a while. Um, and I know, of course, going back to our UI guru, Setiness, but he's also our audio guru. If you've ever watched any of my gameplay streams, I only have audio on that setup because Setiness knows what the hell he's doing. But he has cooked, has whipped up some pretty awesome, like, interior weather sounds. Um, so yeah, I'm really jazzed to get that out there once I, you know. <laughs> do all the other pre-2090 things. We're ready to go here. Okay. Oh, see, and I, yes. One thing I do want to fix, and this is like a CSS thing that has vexed me for years, is if we, um, so I wanted it to scroll like this because I wanted it to be like, boom, I can, until pre-2090 when we've got the nice, you know, copy button there. I want people to at least be able to just click on it twice and get the whole thing selected. But one thing that has vexed me for a minute, we don't have to solve this today, but I would like to solve it, is, yeah, like, uh, the underlying element. So there's two elements at play here, a pre and a code. The pre extends all the way out this way, but the code does not, and the code is what has the gray background, and so it's a little awkward. And I, maybe there's a few ways we could solve this, right? Maybe we could put the gray background on the pre. I don't want to go too far into the weeds on it, but it's a CSS thing that's like... I kind of back away slowly from every time. But this is basically exactly what I wanted. So now it's a matter of, uh, like, is, you know, is this going to work for folks? Because this is literally what I run. I'm on Linux. That's what I run, basically. I cut this out because I have Delta Plugin installed on the system level. But this is more or less what I do. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's what I do, you know. So if the question is then, yeah, does that work for Windows? Oops. 
So, Gonzo, if you want a sanity check me on this, I'm going to pass this to you. Just like whatever your local invocation of that would look like. Um, and just That's exactly what I put in. Success. Okay. That's really great. So until, you know, even some in, pre... Even excluding, excluding the .exe, I tested that as well. Cool. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I thought I was not talking out of my ass on that one. All right. Cool. So then I suppose that this is... Uh, I never okay. knew. That's such a weird thing for it to do, but I'm really grateful that it does, I guess. Well, so the question then is like, what happens if you have ground cover if I, or if you have delta plugin dot exe and delta plugin dot bat in the same folder? Like, what happens then? I don't I'm know. sure it probably gives precedence to bat scripts. Right. There's just, it, just be my first guess. I'm sure Sounds the like the toddliest thing to do. Yeah, I'm sure the fine folks at Microsoft have solved this problem. All right. Well, I think we could ship this then. Um, if you guys agree, on, you know, uh, let me fix that typo, of course. But what I have there, you know, um, is this something that's going to, like, help people do this? Here's what I was thinking, though. I was wondering if we could just uh, incorporate the user settings into that as well. You mean for this path, right? Exactly. So, and also it just occurred to me, not only that, um, and I was actually, this is what I was talking about just a moment ago too. I was like, this would be nice to do, but it's going to take some extra JavaScript. Should be pre-2090 for sure. That's the next enhancement we can do here. But also just occurred to me, this, let's say I'm like, you know, Todd Windows user. Okay, fine. Challenge accepted. Open a PowerShell window, paste that in. What's going to happen? It's going to blow up because they're not in the right folder, right? So we need to put a change directory in there. Uh, you asked them to uh, CD before that. It's in there. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Look at that. Thank you, Gonzo, for reading for me. So here we go, though. This is another thing that we could, with the aforementioned the dynamic path adjustment we can set to what they actually have configured here. Um, yeah, we should do that. I think that that's beyond this and the other edit that I'm working on, but it should be done. Maybe not in this release, but soon, pre-2090. Let me write this here. Uh, so for specifically ground... I think we can do that for the Delta plugin instructions as well. So... Um, we're talking about dynamically set. I'm gonna put this uh, pre. I don't like make it official. It's the pre 2090 idea, for sure. Because it's not gonna be you know this is like some stuff it's we're already. Proof. Well, yeah, it's stuff we're already doing, right? Like. Slapping in user settings is a pattern we're doing elsewhere, so it should be pretty easy, knock on wood, to put it in here. But yeah, I want to make sure we don't limit ourselves uh, to trying to sneak it in scope creep wise. So yeah, because I definitely want to finish this today. Um, all right, so back to this. With that in mind, how do we feel about the changes to number six here? I think this is much better. This is kind of what I w was imagining originally when I looked at this and I was like, wait, what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah. And plus it doesn't go over the border, right? Which is the main aesthetic problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so that is a symptom, by the way, of do simply doing a code here without wrapping it in the pre. And the pre is what gives us the actually like the block thing here. But actually I wanted to do this since we're just here. Let's do this real quick. Let's try and look at the thing that I was complaining about. All right. Uh -huh. And so you can see right here, it's exactly what I said. The code, so here we have the code, which cuts off and we can see that with the color change, right? 
and then the pre yep. itself is what gives us the scroll. So what if we bring our background color for code? This seems eyeballing it too dark. That's not the right one. Okay, this element is causing an element overflow. Right, so the, the parent pre, which is fine. We want that. There's actually places in the changelog where I noticed the changelog doesn't fit on mobile right because we're overflowing stupidly. We gotta fix that pre-2090, hopefully. Mm, okay, I was doing this to kill time while we... No. Was I doing this to kill time? I thought I was, but I think now, <laughs> I think now we're just nitpicking here. Oh, okay, let's commit what I have. I think that's a ship it from Gonzo and Sector on this. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Originally, I think you were going to finish doing the uh, dev uh, checkbox. <laughs> we got we're going to sidetrack. We're going to get there, yeah, for sure. For sure. Let's, um... Pull up. Oops. And I'm not going to deploy just yet, because um, hopefully, yeah, we can wrap this one up here. I'll unstash it. All right. Hopefully, we can wrap this one up and, and get that pushed up and, and put that on the beta, too, and get people using it. So one thing I wanted to undo that I did yesterday. Yeah, we don't need to put... I don't want to... I figure with scope creep and kind of awkward to put just the checkbox here. So instead, I'm just going to go with the hidden um, thing here. And, and I was having trouble with that previously yesterday because I was setting the value wrong, but it should just work, I would think. Um, let's confirm that theory. Ooh, oh, okay, yeah. I have to crunch the database. Django's yelling at me. I had an old version of the data. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, we added a feature to the database so that we can tell various things. Use me for when the user wants dev build stuff because some mods that are not explicitly just a dev build mod have dev build options and it gets confusing don't worry um, and so we have unapplied migrations for the database so let's do that um, make, make migration I think we don't need to yeah but we do need to reset the database and so while that's going I'm going to noodle away here and let's just kind of bring ourselves back to where we were yesterday exactly. So left off, yeah. So we had a way for you, the user, and this is not live, uh, go away you. This is not live on the beta yet exactly, but uh, we're just gonna go here. Anyway, you, the user, will be able to say right here, uh, yes, I'm using a dev build, give me all the options related. There are some. And then what's going to happen is you go to the CFG generator and you say, uh, I'm using expanded vanilla or whatever mod list you're using. And then you come down here and you submit your, oops, we have to first select things that we're using. We're doing, going with it all, enable everything. And then we're going to click submit custom setup. And when we do this, you, the user, will be telling that the website. I want dev build stuff and we can crunch and provide you with the related output here. The end result being for you, the user, the experience is say opt into it and then copy paste. And it's, it'll be a lot easier than uh, reading the usage notes carefully and then remembering you have to do something special, you know, easy to goof that. Um, let's see where we're at here. Ooh, still going. And yes, yeah, so I was previously scope creeping myself a little bit and giving you the option to say, I want dev build somewhere here. Um, but for now, we're going to hold off because it's just, we want to do that eventually, right? We were talking yesterday about putting all the options actually right here or in some reusable widget that we can embed on any page that really needs it, you know, um, including the folder deploy script. 
I think that's a, a low, relatively high priority, low hanging fruit kind of a task for the website in terms of a usability improvement. Okay, so we're effectively done here. We committed this change. I didn't push it up just yet. We got our new data. And then, so here's the not final form of the aforementioned form, but here it is. And so that is what we would check, right? I want to leave it unchecked first, but that is what we would check. Um, and let's click Just Get More One because that's one that has Natural Character Growth and Decay, which is a specific mod that has some different install instructions if you're using a dev build. And we're going to go, okay, so, hmm. Would have expected to hit, oh, right. We didn't hit the code path just yet. Let's enable it all, baby. All right, false. Okay, so that's this backend code right here, where we're ta we're taking the post arguments, which if you're not familiar with HTML and web in general, uh, that's when we submit a form in a certain way. Um, the backend can get data, and that's what we're doing here. We're plucking out the names of mods you want to use and other things, including do you want dev builds? And then I just am pr crudely printing it out here, which manifests itself into this little indication, false. So now, if Todd wills it, what will happen if I go to the settings page? Well, I check this box, and I come back here and do the same thing over again. I will see it say true right here. Okay, well that could be just a problem with how, it, okay. Let's revisit the JavaScript. I think I know what's going on here. Whoop. Yeah, yeah, okay. HTML, did I, yeah. Yes, they've hidden, okay. So another thing I'm going to do here to sanity check ourselves is I'm going to print out, as I was doing before, I'm going to print out what the the data we're getting is. Print. Just a little bit of puts debugging, as they call it. And so conspicuously missing, let's go ahead and let's reduce the noise here. Uncheck, and I want the one thing we really care about here. There we go. Boom, okay, conspicuously missing. Anything else? That's a clue, okay, so this approach here, this something I'm doing here with this hidden is not right. And it's entirely possible I'm using hidden wrong so mdn hidden i have done this before okay not trying to do that okay can view source well okay we should do that that's a good sanity check right We call it, again, yes dev, hidden, okay? Yes dev, here it is, okay, has no value. Um, but we should be able to see the value in the inspector. Uh, just as a sanity check, let's go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd you all come back? <laughs> so this is a, that's a bug. I had only this one selected and now it's the only one deselected. That's a problem. Okay. I'm not gonna actually 
actually be able to see anything. So let's just go ahead and uh, expand content. Here we go. Custom space post form hidden. No, that's a different hidden field. Yeah, we're using multiple. Can I filter this? Yes. Boom, there we go. Value, true. Okay. Interesting. So it's just not getting passed into the form. Fair enough. I might be making some bad assumptions here. Special meaning. Oh, name. Okay, which I don't have a name here, I don't think. No, I don't. When a form is submitted. Oh, okay. Well, don't care about that. basically what I'm using it for. Yeah, I mean, it's so stupid simple. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. Uh, unless the problem is here. Um, I Now, I did get a... When I looked at it in the inspector, I did get see a true. Right, so we see true here. Value true. Which matches the setting. So... Uh, not actually that skeptical about this code actually I'm gonna back off from questioning it too much ID maybe I have to give it a name to put it into the uh, form results let's just do that Oop. all right let's make the yeah make that visible we're gonna get Oh geez, this so this oh yeah, this reversing everything. That's a problem. We're gonna need to fix that for this update for sure. There we go. Nuts. Okay, wait though. That was the old code. We need to do it one more time. <sighs> spicy. That's so spicy. Wow. That's a very major bug. No, come on. There, there we go. There we go. That's the stuff. Cool. That's what I needed. Okay. And so that translates to. Um. So the question is, do we need the special name? The answer is no. No, we don't. Mm, well, maybe we do, because we do need this distinct, because we're giving it a value and not a checked. So I think we do, actually. Okay. And with that, though, should be everything we need. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these curly braces. Nice. So with that, now we should have. Huh? Save it. With that, right there, in combination with the JavaScript we've been doing, the back end should agree with us. Now. 
I'm, I'm deeply concerned about this, though. Oof. I'm sure that happens on the beta and on the main site at the moment. True. Hey, ho, look at that. Cool. All right. Now, sanity recheck. Since we had to go down that uh, path, let's disable it. Let's go back there. JGM. Gimme none. That's another problem. Ooh, so many problems here. Ugh. Uh huh, okay, okay. That's problematic. So our test here is no good. We're just checking if it's there. It's always going to be there, it turns out. Um, so we're going to need a more creative approach. So what I'm thinking is... actually make it hidden um, if current yes dev is false. This is what I mean. Oops. That's no good. Whoops. Also no good. Still no good. Ah, there we go. All right. So, if the element, the hidden element, is on the page, and if we are not opting into development stuff, we're going to... Okay, let's just see if that even works the way I'm na naively, admittedly naively expecting it to. Um, yeah. No, no, there you go. Okay, we're gonna load the new code though. That was the old code. Okay, that's just giving me that no matter what. Hey, Santa. Good day to you. I hope you're doing okay. We're just noodling on some JavaScript. All right, so that won't work. Disable. So maybe there's something else, right? Right, I'm looking for the JavaScript equivalent of the MW script disabled. I don't want to delete it necessarily. Okay. jQuery, no. Yeah, I tried that. Right? No. Okay, okay, well. That doesn't seem like it's really a thing, but I'm willing to try it. Right, yeah, okay. It could just be my language server being a goof. Let's give it a try. Yes, that was it, I think. Okay, so sanity recheck, re, 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 check. We're going back Yay. and forth. Yeah, we're getting there. We're going back and forth, though, so let's turn it back on. Now we want to see the true result. No, wait. Yeah, 
you know, one thing uh, I was actually talking to Atwalpa just before the stream today, and uh, one thing I mentioned while speaking to him, I thought we could do was uh, take a look at Zach as a cat's "Honey, I Shrunk the Nerevarine," which recently got an update. I don't know if any of you guys have looked at that, but I think we're gonna do that. I haven't, I haven't seen the updated version, but I have been very keen to try it now that he's released it because I still have the old one that he pulled off of Nexus that I got out of the uh, the Lua dump. Same. It's a really cool concept. I like I like big and small scalings of things. Like it, it just sounds fun. And there we go. True. Does does that do what I think it does? Yes. It has like a little tiny house. All right, yeah, Santa, you're in. Okay, cool. All right, uh, so I'm gonna, we're gonna, okay. Let, we are like at the cusp of making this work. So let's finish it up. And then uh, what, t what the hell time is it? We got, okay, it's not, a, it's just a little over halfway through and we don't necessarily have a hard stop, but we are gonna look at that today before we're done streaming. I just wanna finish this up <laughs> before I lose my sanity too much. All right, so um, though, I wanna say, this is like this inversion of what I've selected here is a kind of a concerning problem. So we're going to have to fix that too, but uh, not before we look at Honey, I Shrunk the Nerevarine because yeah, oh, <laughs> good stuff. It's just so further to something Sector and I were talking about earlier. It's so ingrained into me to have like the Git side on the right pa uh, panel. <laughs> Having it on the left there, I was just like, no, no, my brain doesn't work that way. All right, this, ship it, right? We need that. Let's come back to here now. So the last thing missing. Ooh, which... Wait a minute, I already plugged it in. Okay, so we should be able to just add natural character growth and decay and see the dev specific options enabled. Let's do it. I think JGM might be the smallest mod list with it. Maybe Starwind, we're going with JGM. But that would put a bow on this feature. And then we can unbork the other things that are borked. All right, custom CFG. Gimme. All right. So what we want to see is the dev build folder path. Oh. Look at that. And the dev build plugin. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good. Lovely. So now I want to do this. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Oof. All right. Not going to focus on that too much. We'll fix that. Turn it off. Go back in. Reasonably small mod list. Give me just one. No dev options. <laughs> okay. I need some so it's so I need a sanity check here because I thought that was gonna be good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the old. I'm not gonna resubmit it. I'm gonna actually go through it and do it again. Um, it's so hard to eyeball it here. There we go. My old man eyes. It's false. Okay. Okay, so that's good. The back end has the right information. It's just my query here is bunk. And this is the code path we want to be. So this right here. Mm. Ah, you know what? Aha. We made, we made, and by we, I mean me, made a mistake. Let's go back here. Yeah, look at this. Whoops. That's not 
the default. That's not the default. False. The default should be, this is not a dev build option, right? And we explicitly turn things on for it. This is, okay, how I foot got myself yesterday. We were just too engrossed in some fun conversation with Mr. Herdrex here with us. All right. Cool. All right. So now we need only do this. Erase the file. Make make migrations. When in doubt, print it out. You got it. Ooh, I like that. Wow. <laughs> That's the best slogan for puts debugging ever, really, I think. Did you make that up? <laughs> That's solid gold. All right. I've well, heard that before, no. <laughs> wow, sure Gonzo. I'm the first person to say that. You coined it. All right. It's a, it put it, it's like that Curb episode where Richard Lewis says he cur he coined the blank from hell. <sighs> All right, player home. Let's get up my folder here. So, honey, I yeah, I don't have it in here anymore, honey. All right, we're doing this. <laughs> Give me the place where the mod is. Honey, I shrunk the narrowing. I don't think I need to <laughs> <laughs> put anything more oh duck duck go that's it's all about that trombone song <laughs> oh man suddenly i want to rewatch that movie no no terraria oh, come on yeah there we go you're killing me okay nice okay I don't know if we're going to add this one to mod lists or not. <laughs> it's debatable. Uh, but certainly on a technical basis, it's worth checking out, I think. Whew. MW Dev, we are. I actually just built a new app image. Oh, it's like the hut? Yeah, so so let me, let me go back here. Get that in there. Um, let's look at the pictures here. So you have you have like a little cardboard box house basically, and you have this thing that you activate that shrinks you down. And so yeah, it's like a player home mod with a little home that's a box you carry around that you shrink down to go into. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, let's go see it. That's amazing. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> typical Zach like creativity, you know. Lua creativity monster wizard machine. Um, and then we give me the minimal. All right. Yeah, I was trying to Zach do a little. Zach has a knack. He does. Ooh, you're in a rhyming role, my brother. You got to write a book. <laughs> All right. I wonder. I always wondered if I could. I just no no Emacs says no that's fine alright Wait, Santo, sorry, which show? I'm like in the zone here and I didn't see what you wrote. Oh. Wait, yeah, which show? <laughs> oh, Curb. Yeah, well, that's because, like, uh, you know. That's what I meant when I was talking about the trombone song. Oh, yeah, so like my mod uh, for that I made, which if you're not familiar, we're just going to, before I go into the game, we're going to just take a slight detour and we're going to look <laughs> exactly. at Exactly. Curb Your Death, which is, I think, like a critical immersion mod for anybody looking for the best Morrowind experience. Um, just try not to die too much. But, yeah, so I add, like, the typically played at the end of the episode song from Curb Your Enthusiasm, but it's called Fro Frolic by Luciano Mi Michelini. Um, hope I'm saying that right, but, yeah. That just, like, it's great. <laughs> and, and for me, when I play Morrowind and I die... 
it's like such a perfect thing like if i'm about to rage and flip the table um then finally i hear this song and i'm like oh okay it's fine <laughs> okay the game you just lost it hmm you just lost it the what the game Why is my performance? I guess it's the usual stream quality performance for me, I guess. Uh, shoot. So what is the... Uh... I didn't dump the plug-in first, so I don't actually know what I want. Let's do that. Minus O here. Alright. Um, spell, no. house item no so there's a bunch of yeah all the items in the house have like as you know obviously statics and stuff because they're interactable hmm. activator maybe that's the or maybe we should huh read the mod description I can't wait for you to try this in game. This looks so sick. Oh yeah, it's so wacky. It's like the any in place. Okay, we learn again. Not find. You will find the house in your inventory. Zach has taken the liberty of thinking about us, the little people. And I just simply did not take a close enough look. Tiny home. All right. Well, let's go ahead and just uh, let's. Go to my bestie Fargoth's place here. Which, by the way, I gotta say, and I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but I use the default character a lot when I'm testing. And I gotta say, uh, recently, if you open it up, the game, in 0 0.48, you'll notice the shadows look quite different. And that's because in 0 0.49, Capastrophic, I believe, fixed a bug regarding like the way the light comes down from the sun and I never noticed that all the shadows were wrong and now like when you spawn you correctly see the shadows right here from the trees and I'm still not used to it after years of seeing it the other way <laughs> alright excuse me alright I just want to plop this down here Ooh, here we go alright All right. Wait. So now do I? Was there a? You can even reach into it and <laughs> activate things. Place it, and you'll be able to enter it by shrinking, which you can do by sneaking in front of the house. Okay. So yeah, the old version had the crystal. Okay. So now we're just gonna. <laughs> yes. <gasps> no way. <laughs> yes way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Ah. Cozy little frau uh, Unbelievable. house. Unbelievable. In Fargoth's front doorstep. Just where I always wanted to live, really. And then, yeah, you got a bunch of containers here. You know, I'm sure Zach has the, like, portable, carryable containers. So, so the question is now, let's just, like, spam some crap on the floor. All right, let me put King's Oath there. Um, first off, let's go upstairs and put something there, too. So, yeah, unbelievable is right. <laughs> let's throw the... My little... Antique dagger. Let's put something in the chest for funsies. All right. Good old Zach blowing me away, as usual. And then, so... Do I... Do the old sneakeroo? How do we return, Zach?
any items drop will be shrunk to tiny size isn't fully supported yet. So, okay, okay. Can only have one of the house. If you add a second and place it, it won't work as you might hope. <laughs> okay. Huh. Uh, it doesn't seem like he says exactly how we get big again. So I'm going to... Big and ain't me, please. We can pick up... Oh, so this is the curse of having a little pocket dimension. Right? How do you get back now? Maybe this video is weird because it still has the crystal theme. I think there was a Star Trek episode about this. Original series? Original series? I, no, it was Deep Space Nine. <laughs> DS9. Oh, is it, are you talking about the one where they go into the game? It's like kind of an early one, right? Ooh, all right. We can leave no, quite a later high. one where they're like investigating, investigating an anomaly where like they get smaller the more they go into it. And uh, I think it's like Jed Zia Dax and O'Brien or somebody like that uh, gets stuck. Uh, Probably O'Brien. Uh, in like the small version of it, and they're exploring the uh, Defiant. Okay, so I think I figured out how to big innate again, and I think it's to jump. Oh, but the micro defiant one, I definitely remember they the because the defiant itself is shrunk, right? And they're like flying, or no, 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 they're in like a shuttle that's shrunk, and they're flying that around the defiant. Something like they're that. They're in a runabout. Runabout, yeah, some that's shenanigans right. uh -huh. like that, yeah. So if I jump, now I'm big innating. Okay, so yeah, don't jump when you're in your tiny home. <laughs> but uh, wow, okay, so. Here, I biginate myself. Now I'm Eldefire size again. Hello. She still looks down on me, though. Pick up the house. Can I pick up the house? Hmm. My test character can jump quite high. Oh, which reminds can me. Can you so edit the speed of that transition? Let's check if there's an option. I want to say in theory, yes, but it's a question of, yeah, has Zach made an option for it? And no, he has not. Oh, wait, can I pick this up now? No. Okay. Or does it want me to do Tiny Home? Yeah, okay. So you can't, like, activate it per se. Ooh, and it left my weapons there, though. All right. Well, you know, we can probably help. We can probably help fix stuff like that. But uh, what if I move oh, no. on? Oh, no. <laughs> they're tiny. <laughs> yeah, they're shrunkenated still. All right, let's plop the tiny house down again. Yeah, so this is definitely wins the award of like. They don't stay tiny, do they? <laughs> mind most mind blowing Lua mod, next to Ashlander Architect probably. Yeah, so um, my hope was that it would teleport the items back into the house. Let's see. Uh, I don't see the King's Oath. Yeah, so well, it's acted worn. That's not fully supported, so that's fine. But hey, my helm is there. So yeah, obviously don't just go chucking stuff on the ground. Um, question is, where'd that stuff go? <laughs> it was here a moment ago. Maybe big and eight. Yeah, no matter what. Okay. Oh, hey, no, here it is. Can we pixel hunt for this thing enough? Yes, I got it. <laughs> Little toothpicks. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, you know, that's not perma shrunk King's Oath. <laughs> but yeah, uh, awesome. Yeah. Like mod idea of the I don't know, the century. That's pretty cool. It's so incredible. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing, right? That's what we learned today. Somebody made a honey, I shrunk the kids mod. And naturally, that somebody is Zach. All right, well, let's try to put a, uh, a bow on this feature that we had here. Um, which I think, last we checked, wasn't working. Because, right, because I had... 
That's right. It wasn't working because we were assigning the data wrongly. So let's get look back at our parsing code here in the forms code. And, um, you know, we don't need this conditional. And we're going to de-indent that. And we're going to do... And just pass it in, whatever it may be. Likewise. Maybe I'm jumping the gun by deleting that, but I don't think we need it anymore. All right. Now. Now it should be what we want to see. Let's try it. Um, give me everything. Excuse me. But is it on? Did we leave it on? Oh, no, we sure didn't. Okay, okay. Hmm, okay, so what's wrong with our code here then? Um, uh, did we perhaps not regenerate the database? Perhaps not. Hmm, okay, well, we're going to let that do its thing. And uh, while it is, we can maybe sh uh, shuffle back to begin getting a handle here on what's broken. And I did a couple of weeks ago take an initial stab at unborking some of the bork things on Go Home specifically. What I had just finished adding was uh, support for NPCs noticing the weather and reacting accordingly to it. So if there's a blight storm or rain, they'll go inside, just like they would if it's nighttime. With some exceptions, right? Like if you're a merchant, maybe the merchant will be like, oh, I'm staying out, whatever. Um, and then another change that I was working on was this one right here, where I do a line of sight check. Right, I try not to, if somebody doesn't have a home, they still get disabled the normal way of just disabling them, like the MW script one does. But I do try to see, by way of an async rendering raycast, I do try to see if the player's looking at them. Um, mostly works. Maybe we'll notice some of the cases in which it doesn't work, because there are some, for example, if you're like uh, behind a post, and you can still see the NPC, but the collision-wise under the hood, you can't see it. You're behind the post, so psh, disable. I've seen that a few times. Um, I don't know what I can do about that besides like a, I don't know, like checking the actual camera viewport versus a, you know, that maybe that's the right way to do it instead of doing a async, you know, rendering raycast, which seems like it might be expensive. I don't know. I'm not really sure. So that was one of the things I struggled with. Um, so yeah, the intent is, before we go forward with some of the cool, like, knock on the door and let me in features that Detail Devil suggested and others, uh, we'll polish up what's here, going home kind of stuff, noticing the weather, um, making it configurable, that kind of thing, you know. And just... Uh, Hey, Nikolai, welcome. Glad uh, to have you join the stream. Thank you uh, for joining. And yeah. Well, and so... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. There's also other reasons that you would want to be concerned about performance, too. Like, it's not necessarily because the system is old. In fact, actually, the, the parts of the system that we've got exposed to us through Lua are the fancy, shiny new parts. But that doesn't necessarily prevent you from writing, like, bad or slow code right like yeah um rendering raycasts specifically are just a slow thing to do that you want to avoid in general that's that would carry across to other engines as well i've had 
bugs specifically with doing that too many times in unity scripts as well so yeah for sure and also too i just want to call it, this is a dangerous bit of code potentially too right on update is any every frame so if you got a, like a 60 fps game 60 times a second this code's gonna run you know um so like you want to be careful with what you do there in that path and i tried to be here but <laughs> todd willing i didn't make a mistake all right let's come back here now we crunched the in, in, just to elaborate like a bit um on update is something else that you'll also get in other engines by that exact name right uh but in other engines you also tend to have more frameworking that allows you to avoid using it because it's so expensive and so that's part of the reason that we have to be extra careful about it here if this were unity we could do some fancy events or make up our own which we can kind of do here but there's just a lot of stuff that you have to do an on update still right yes yeah, good exactly good call out um okay so i did go and enable it and that's what we want to see so okay that's good i'm gonna go back now come on uh and yeah the what's further to what sector just said you know and, and a lot of what uh, MWSC Lua people are familiar with is coding to like events and stuff like that, you know, um, and and, la and lacking such events, we just do things raw and dirty, in on update, maybe even on frame, um, but we have to be thoughtful about it so we don't kill your frame rate. Okay, well it's actually turned off. Uh, oof, did I so did I go so. I need to see, I said when I deleted that print, I was like, am I jumping the gun here? And certainly I would be proven right. Give me that, I need that sanity check. The back end knows. I need to know that the back end knows before I question my sanity. Should be false before I click this. Yeah. All right, <laughs> so the back end knows. Now we can drill in on why it thinks I opted in because what we should see is not that and not this one right here. So let's take a deep dive into the database contents. Ooh, excellent question. Thank you for that. Um, Jumping right into Lua and the creation kit is a very deep dive. And I mean, it all depends on how you learn. But there's a lot of prerequisite knowledge you're going to need before things start to make sense, I think. Hey, guys. I think the most Third important tracks. thing about it is to um, have a very strict and specific idea of what it is that you want to do. Right? Yeah. Because the thing about uh, OpenMW modding especially is that this is a scary large technology stack, right? There's multiple construction sets that you can use, and I'm making that problem worse. And there's a lot of command line tooling, and there's a lot of old tools, and, you know, there's three different flavors of Lua, and there's technically, like, three different versions of the engine, right? Because there's multiplayer scripting, there's OpenMW, there's MWSE. Yeah. So, like... Think about, like, what you would want to do that is fairly sane. Make a house mod. That's a great start that a lot of people can do. That's how or... I started. Yeah, my first project was a shitty house mod. I was watching one of Dark Elf Guy's videos to learn how to use the CS. Excellent. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Full stack more with <laughs> Yeah, I love that term. I think you just invented a beautiful term, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Full stack. Absolutely. By the way, hey, Herjax, you yeah. kind of came in the, in the middle of the conversation, but thank you for joining us today again. Yeah, no problem. Episode two Sorry. of the MOMW show. Sorry, I couldn't make it earlier. Just No, no, you're good, man. Glad that I could get you guys before it ended. Yeah, yeah. We're just doing what we do, you know, here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thanks again for joining and uh, helping us get closer to Chin. <laughs> you missed an epic moment. Yeah? What happened? Ah, uh, damn it. Okay. 
Uh, where are you, Gonzo? Are you talking about with uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Nerverine? Chat's not giving me any clue, yes. apparently. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, Herdrex, you did kind of miss something quite epic. But Zach, of course, Zach is involved. But we were looking at, uh, let me give you the link in the chat here on Discord. Um, but uh, so naturally, Zach is involved, and yeah, we were looking at his Honey, I Shrunk the Nerverine carryable tiny player home mod. Um, does what you think it does. <laughs> that man, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a clue right there. There's a clue. Is a data bunk, <laughs> data the problem? Okay. So we were yeah, there. everybody hates Chris, but everybody loves Zach. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dev Bill True. <gasps> oh, of course. Silly me. Okay. <laughs> all right. It's all good. I know the problem. We So we've added the field to our data. We even put the field in our data, but we are not using it. And it really is just some silly boilerplate like this. Like, you know. Yeah, that's really, and then we'll do it for plugins as well. Okie dokie. This one's a little bit of a different cut, I think. So I think we can do it like this. We can say, um, build. do a little Python syntax here. here. But although this may cause an exception, I don't know, we'll see. An unhandled exception, I should say, um, or false. Is it gonna just work? So unfortunately, to know, we actually have to crunch the database again, but it'll be worth it, I swear. All right. Yeah, Herdrix, I encourage taking a look at that one in your, in your free time. That's a definitely a soon-to-be must-have, I oh, would say. I will. <laughs> Let's take, let's size up our changes here. But Zach's work is such a bittersweet relationship. It just, he does so many amazing things and then he just moves on and you just want him to not have a life and just keep updating that thing. Uses Zach Utils, right. oh, Ashlander Architect, and the whole thing. Right. Yeah, if only full stack Morrowind modder <laughs> was like a legit profession it is arguably legit but you cannot you know pay the bills with it i don't think <laughs> oh yeah we're a, bit, we're a bit too niche the reason why i made it today i i know the pain oh man i can hardly wait uh i'm pretty excited to see this wrap up because this is a you know a pain point. And then after this, maybe we can, before we jump into Go Home, maybe we can take a look at this inversion of all my selections here, because that's no good. We want people to use this checkbox thing. We really, really do. It's a key part of the intended user experience. But when it's janky like that, I have a hard time standing behind it. Oof. All right. Look at me. I knew it wasn't going. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Should have known better. Uh, yeah, and we actually don't need this else like we see here because it's going to default to false. So, Yeah, I know, right? That would be very user-oriented, Nikolai. 
you know, uh, a uniquely user oriented thing that would be cool to see for sure. M modding and concepts like it are why people care about Morrowind in 2024. You know, we have like a correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember Herdrex saying that DEG said that is like record number users ever for Morrowind. I don't remember that he mentioned anything about users necessarily, but he did say um, we are we we did more mods last year by far than anything that has been recorded previously. Oh, okay, that 20, was the thank you. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty three was the largest year in terms of number of mods being released, and this January already broke last January, which was a part of the greatest year. So if things keep going at this rhythm. 24 is gonna even be bigger than 23 yeah outstanding mm -hmm. yeah I'm, we're gonna have trench broom support coming in fairly soon actually like i'm i'm closing in on that project and um i'm hoping on the outside that when g7 sees me like hey i finished trench broom support <laughs> that will finally influence him to uh go and finish blender cs Oh, that would be awesome. I love Blender so much. Um, yeah. Oh, wow, cool. That's good feedback, Nicolaier. Yeah, I mean, we are very active folks here, so it's good that it appears that way. And, and yeah, like, considering the age of Morrowind and the relative, like, I mean, let's face it, there it's not trivial to really get into. You know, there's quite a bit of Toddisms you have to know about to really have a good time and not want to flip the table over. Strange that, but especially really... like once you get into the internals of the engine and start trying to actually work on it, it only gets even worse because there's so many things where you're like, "Is this stupid on purpose? I don't know." <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> actually, reading Nikolaier is just like looking in a mirror, right, Johnny? Like, I'm just uh -huh. this is where I was, Nikolaier, just like not even a year ago. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Coming on board, yeah, and it... so. This is exactly how I started, and the man in the hoodie you're just watching in the screen is just solely responsible for me being here, and alongside the Colonel Gonzo, and then Sector, and then everything else is history. So yeah, absolutely feasible. And I have zero talent going for me, so trust me. If oh, you please. have the right attitude, if you have the right attitude, and you just keep at it, the best environment, the just the best environment. And I have to say, I feel very much the same way that you do, uh, Nikolair. Um, I was a modder for a very, very long time, like since I was like 12 years old. And I stopped for like three or four years, because I really only do Tez 3 MP, and the whole scene was just kind of, uh, at the time. We didn't have MWSE when I left, and then I came back like late... 2022 and so the whole thing was like what the fuck is going on here man um like everybody's got lua um you know there's there's g7 was not around back in the day there's so many more casual new modders there's more test 3 mp servers there's more morrowind servers and more morrowind modders in general so it's it's a lot of fun to to be around i think the that point that you brought up about um funneling money into the mod scene is a really interesting one as well uh because this is kind of this is kind of something that like bethesda has been struggling with for a decade now especially since skyrim came out right yeah they've been trying to do that paid mods thing and make it work for them uh and the community has been trying to what about like a website that's kind of set up like uh Like it's set up like Fiverr or something like that, where people can just like chip in money into a pot for like a mod idea, and then mod creators can like go in and collect the bounty and create the mod for the people who want it. Yeah, I think such a thing exists on a couple forms, you know, of services out there. Um, I don't know. Well, you know, that's a really good idea. Um, we could probably take advantage of actual bug bounty services such as Hacker One for that. Well, so like Cartoffles is trying to do that too, right? They got the bug, the mod bounties on the Morrowind Discord, which is an interesting thing to see conceptually. 
Um, and I just wanted to real quick too, Mr. Herjax, the humble creator of immersive grotto entrances, which I've had on the screen here, showing some pictures. And yeah, this is, you know, speaks for itself, idea and quality. So props, Mr. Herjax, and thank you for that. Oh man, come on. Thank you. you thank you, Ray. Today we were going to, like I was watching um, a discussion happening on a Dark Elf Guy video, Nikolaier, and that may you may relate to this or not, but I certainly relate to it. Gonzo and Johnny can tell a story where they have been hanging around just like heavily. Uh, yeah, grotto guy. <laughs> so far, yeah, pretty much that's what I am. But anyway, just like John, Johnny and Gonzo can tell uh, an older story where before Discord, because a lot of people were complaining, not complaining, just sharing a story on the DG video about being mistreated and people not encouraging them and whatever. And honestly, with things like Discord, at the very least, the worst elements, it gets easier for us to sort of weed it out, right? Imagine right now somebody came in here and started trolling. It would be over in a second. And in the old days, it didn't happen like that. Now we have live interactions. We have people actually showing themselves and on Discord. I mean, sure, you can't afford to be a dick and be banned, but it's just... More often than not, people are more careful. It's, it's not exactly like we were in front of each other hanging at a mall, but it did change. So the environment just forced the worst element out. And so, because when I joined, Johnny and Gonzo were just, it was a history lesson, man. Just hanging, just riding shotgun next to them. We were just hanging here and Johnny telling old stories and bringing everybody up to speed. And then I got encouraged to sort of try to help a little bit. And uh, Gonzo is just by far, in my personal opinion, the best troubleshooter and playtester we have, period. I mean, nobody has the, 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 just the stomach that he has for that kind of thing. And just, so yeah, stick around. You will end up doing some cool things. But hang around with these guys. So it, they'll take you to places, trust me. And Sector as well, <laughs> I mean. Oh, yeah. You humble. Us all, who The you. whole, the whole squad, really. Just the vibe around modding OpenMW, and it's just amazing. And ironically, it is Johnny that is actually bringing a lot of people to vanilla of all the things. One of the the last things that Johnny did with Sector in very very recent past was an entire workshop solely dedicated for a Linux environment for vanilla. And it just made it's waves. True. Right. I mean, so again, with these guys, there's no dog in this fight vibe. It's just. Very, We're here very for the cool. Morrowind. No, Not necessarily no. completely unmodded, but um, with MWSC specifically. Yeah. And you can. Scripted. Yeah. And I have the. Um, obviously, Danae has the video recording of it. And also, we have the transcript up here on GitLab. But uh, yeah, if you're a Linux user like myself or Sector or Setiness, and you want to get set up with advanced vanilla modding tools on Linux, you don't have to be afraid. We've done it. It's doable, and it doesn't suck uh, that much. Uh, no, it doesn't suck at all. I think it's great, actually. So you could check this out. Um, again, it's on our GitLab. So, yeah. It was a lot of fun to do, too. Um, you know, because I think stuff like CSSE is definitely a critical part in the modding workflow, you know, and so we don't want Linux users to be excluded from having access to that kind of stuff. Just got to come back here. These shots are great, Herdrax, by the way. Well done with these pictures. <laughs> That's actually OpenMW. <laughs> and and that there's a lot of Gonzo in there because he was the one that actually set it up for me, the whole shader thing. So, yeah. Nice. It was just pressing. It was just pressing the button, pretty much. Cool. This, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of six point X vibe going in there as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well done. This is exciting. I haven't updated my total overhaul since this one got released, you know, and then added in. So I'm extremely excited to see it in action. Dedicated to you, brothers, right there at the bottom. Yes. Like, yes. It's totally a privilege, man. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm glad. I'm, I remember, so Herdrax showed up one day. We bridge our Discord channel into IRC, and I hang out on IRC still because I just like it. And Herdrax showed up because we have the, you know, we got a link on here. You can 
get into the the web chat. And so Herdrex shows up one day on IRC and just the rest is history, right? I'm like, come on to Discord, man. And then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That thing. So beautiful. And it, not to end up in a very dramatic and teary eye thing, but just what happened, Nikolai, and it's not unlikely that it's, this can happen to you as well. But with these guys, like Johnny is just far beyond a fellow modder, like. This mother trucker is a friend for life. So I don't give a damn if the whole community exploded and Marwin was for some reason non-existent. Like, yeah, we would still hang out a lot. For sure. So this here now is just a side product. I mean, these guys are helping me with college and everything. It's just, yeah, it's amazing. All my best friends are Morrowind fans, which is a nod to a Less Than Jake song. I know Gonzo feels it. All I know is one day I'm getting to Chicago. I don't give it a I will. Oh, yeah, I'm for sure. I'm getting the message just hyped up for it. But it'll We're going to have the, have the MOMW cookout, right? Oh, man. It, this this will happen. All right. So meanwhile, while we've been sort of chit-chatting here, I've been keeping this going. And you can kind of see when I had dev builds opt out it gave us the correct output but now when i've opted into dev uh, builds if this is like all wrong this will <laughs> yikes so um the issue goes back to my query though if we go to the form here yeah so i'm just doing something really naive here i'm just saying like dev build with whatever value it happens to be yes or no and saying yes or no uh excludes one or the other and you, when in reality, we want to mix them, right? Um, so I'm kind of rethinking my Boolean approach here. Um, what I have done in the meantime while we were chatting was I have changed the what I did here, you may have noticed, is I said null true. And so anything that's not explicitly set to true will not be false. It will be none or null, but it's none in Python. So um, what can I say? Or true or none. Oh, I'm really grasping at straws here, but let's try it. Mm, still not right. Okay. Let's add a slight bit more sanity checking okay so we would we would have at least seen more plugins if i didn't totally botch this actually what i'm gonna do is i want to do this in the shell let's bigify the text here all right um so m is the mod in question now we want mod plugin. For mod M. Okay. Whew. Who'd have thought we'd ever have this many plugins? Okay. And note we see this one in here. And now we do not. Okay. This feels like something that I will probably resolve after some lunch. But let's continue to drill in just for a little bit here. Um, but yeah, I'm clearly doing it wrong, right? I don't need either or. I need both, but sometimes without the other thing. So... Oh, 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 I need a Q object. Yeah, okay. Q, and not my favorite Star Trek character. Okay, he's not my favorite, but he's pretty good. Yeah, definitely we are. my favorite. Uh, for reference. Yeah, so I don't know, like, it's up there, right? And if you've seen, you know, Pic the new Picard series, well, all right, Nikolai, cheers, thanks for joining. We'll see you around. 
I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil anything, but the Picard series. Uh, wowie. Okay, that's it. Okay, so in our search code, we're doing this Q business here, which is a complex query syntax for Django. So we're going to have to turn this into a Q. Uh, results, right? How does it work, Johnny? I'm confused. Don't worry, I am too. It's cool. Allows us here by way of this, uh, you know, we call it the pipe. I don't know what Windows people call it, but this is the pipe. The pipe allows us to basically get to a bunch of ors. Or it contains Q in the name or in the brief name or in the blah, blah, blah. We're doing a bunch of stuff, and this is how our search code works. So we can translate this to right here relatively easily. Let's first import that code. And then we just say Q, the trickster. Um, so we want to keep all of this, but then Q will be the final parameter, and it will be um, dev. And I'm going to undo. So, okay. We'll talk this through dev build. So we're actually going to have to have a two code paths here, I think. Um, oh, jeez. Come on. Hand off the keyboard before I break it anymore. There we go. Okay. So we do need a conditional here. We need to say if yes dev. And then the path for that. All right. So if they've opted in. We want to do something like this. In the final code that I push up, it's going to be false here. Otherwise, it's going to be like this. Provided I'm not losing my head here. Could be. I'm just going to say... I don't know why. Why are you blue? Oh, it's complaining about my lack of indent here. Okay. Now. We should not need to crunch the data. Just yet. And so. If it's all blending correctly, we should see natural character growth and decay properly suggested. Ooh, wait a minute. Spicy. What do we do? This is uh, line 63. Uh, what? Whoops. Positional. Uh, okay. Oh, because it's supposed to be a keyword only argument. Okay. So we just make all these Q then. That's fine. I don't know what that's going to do to performance. I'm a little worried, honestly. We're just going to make it work. good that blends i think Ooh, oh wait, man what? i just got this three cone working in emacs and i think it i think i broke it i think i broke it because my diff is so big what do you mean like an auto thingy yeah because you can just use like git attributes to um make it give you uh diffs for uh, omw add-ons and esps just when you open your status window oh and say that that's the diff tool yeah that's slick we should write a piece about that honestly 
That should go into the modding wiki, my friend. Okay. Yeah, this worked as expected. Well, you might be saying, Johnny, you only have one data path. Well, I didn't fix that code, but I did fix this code. So let's go back and fix the rest. And so the answer is, yeah, friends, we have to do a special kind of data database query that is loaded with conditionals. Um, these are no op conditionals. They have only one state, but this one right here is the key one where we want to mix two possible values of the thing. Okay, let's make it happen again. zoom out just a tiny here okay I'm gonna Now, finally, <laughs> in the face of another apparent bug, we will have solved not a bug, but a usability problem, an arguable usability problem. Aha, voila, here we go. So now, let's return for a re, 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 re sanity check. We have the full dev set up here, which This is an opportunity for an enhancement here because this you do not want. This is a, you opt into dev build, you don't get this one. So this is a, we have to re revisit this and make it so we omit this, we're not finished. But let's disable the feature. Okay. And I'll call it in a good spot here with the exception I just noted. If we see what we wanna see. What's that? The mod with no dev stuff. Okay, well that's the that's the mod with the dev stuff. Let me sanity check myself here. Turned off. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, no dev stuff. Woo. Okay, Whew. sanity checked. But again, we have the ex we have to rule this one out. So. We are at the time for the MOMW show today. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. And let's... So we fix this. Um, this, though, is, I think, going to be something we fix after a couple other things that are slightly more priority. We did look at this. We didn't fix any bugs. We looked at it. We talked about it. Um, we have almost finished the implementation here, but uh, we're pretty close. Close enough to where, yeah, we just got a little, you know edge case going on but uh once again thank you to the monw squad and today gonzo who are Jackson sector for joining me on the show say goodbye everybody please take care guys take care everybody all right momw squad signing off happy modding have a lovely day goodbye bye all